Hybrid productivity applications. Now you've probably heard of this before. Today we're going to unpack what a hybrid productivity application is, the understanding of that it is two or more applications blended into one, and helping you pick the best one for you and your work. We're gonna outline three in particular types of hybrid applications and really drill down to the benefits of them and some of the negatives. So today we're using Miro as our whiteboard collaboration partner. You can find the link in the description below and naturally get access to it, but this is what's gonna be on screen, so do enjoy as we go through it. So let's start with the first type of hybrid productivity application. It's been very weird in the last couple of years. We've seen applications evolve into these different type of applications. And if you're interested to learn a little bit more about that side of stuff, we've got a video called Picking the Perfect productivity app with a little bit of guidance around it. Um, but this video will focus on the three types of hybrid productivity apps. So the first one is the calendar tasks. Now it's strange because this market has evolved pretty rapidly and it's taken over what um, innovation was being made in the to-do list space. But essentially this is combining your calendar and your tasks to be more aligned with your work day. Now, a lot of people like the concept of something called calendar blocking and finding a tool that blends tasks and calendar blocking can be quite difficult. But more recently, there's been a big innovation in this space. So one good example of that could be AkiFlow. They're an application that we've covered here on the channel before, which helps you to literally drag an item or a task onto your calendar and block it in there. And you can interact in either way. And this is the same with apps like Sunsama too, where you can interact by seeing either your calendar view or your task view. It doesn't matter, but they are live together simultaneously. And this is particularly good for those who like working time blocking into their daily schedule, but for those who are also very time stamp orientated. I previously found when I was using apps like Todoist that I would try and time stamp everything, like 9 a.m., 10 a.m., but it was never in a calendar type view, which is something that a lot of people like to have. And this is why these applications are typically doing quite well. However, what I'd say about them is when we typically get an application that's blended to experiences, it does it well, but not perfectly. So for example, with Todoist, it does tasks perfectly um, because it's a task focused application. Whereas when you see Anki Flow and Sansama as an example, they'll probably do tasks 80% well and calendar 70% well with a few in discrepancies because they're not full calendar application. And this is what you should expect with a lot of your um, calendar task applications or any of the hybrid era productivity applications just for the pure sake that they're not fully pure <laughs> at yet. They're evolving, but they're not going to be that experience fully like a calendar application. So the second type of application is a notes calendar. And we've seen this um, probably a few years ago being quite prevalent. Likes of agenda notes um, and note planner are really good examples of these. Uh, weaving calendar with your notes at the same time. So being able to create a note and associate a date to it so that it almost blocks up your calendar with notes. Obviously we know that daily notes is a, a considerable part of a lot of applications like um, a craft and uh, we've even been able to do it on Obsidian, Notion and Reflect and many of those are PKM tools. But in terms of a dedicated application that's focused more on the calendar side of stuff, these two are pretty good at it. Now Agenda Notes, one of the best on the market for this, but it weaves that concept of having your tasks and notes in one location. I'd say they do notes 90% well with Agenda Notes and Calendar 70% well, just because it's not a fully fledged application. But these sort of applications, these hybrid applications are more designed for those who are looking for, who tend to run a lot of their life in notes and what they like is to associate those notes to a date and do that pretty routinely. Doesn't necessarily mean daily notes, which is another sort of more journal, more task based experience, which you can get as in those applications I mentioned earlier, but it does uh, allow you to do it for more suitable for meetings, 
uh, for planning trips, for coordinating information around events. Um, these are all things that can be quite uh, effective, like with gender notes. And, and So the third application or type of applications is notes tasks. And it's really interesting, this market, because it's evolving. Evernote has been a particular leader in the space over the last couple of years, introducing tasks about a year and a half ago, two years ago, and it's been quite popular with the market, although Evernote has also added Calendar as well, so they're sort of a hub in a hub. But Evernote has been good at this, um, sort of weaving notes with tasks. I'd say they do, uh, for example, I would say Evernote does notes 100% well, Whereas uh, I would say they do tasks 70% well. They've got the basis, strong basis there, but nothing stupidly good, like a good solid task management experience like Todoist. Um, but obviously they're not trying to do that. That's why they're a hybrid application. But Evernote is one of those applications that uh, a lot of people do love and the ability to do that is, is becoming more prevalent. Mem is another good example of that, although I would say they do notes 80% well and tasks 50% well. I don't think they're as good at the ability to manage tasks inside of notes as Evernote is, but we're seeing this much more commonly in the market. Now, when it comes to choosing um, which one of these are best for you, it's quite difficult. Um, and one of the biggest bit of advice I have is around taking as much time to research and find out what's suitable for you. Um, sometimes it's worth looking at all, all, what systems you already use. For example, if you find yourself spending a considerable amount of time in your notes and calendar, um, and maybe less time on your to-do list, then maybe a hybrid application between your notes and calendar works well, and having a to-do list alongside it could be a good match. But if you're somebody that really sticks to the whole GTD or maybe a very traditional setup and want three tools for three tools, which is absolutely fine, then that might be better for you. But it's definitely worth seeing what your tendencies are. I noticed a tendency change um, from, I was previously using Todoist, a calendar app and um, a notes app at Evernote at the time. And I noticed a dramatic change that I was definitely spending more time in my calendar and trying to weave those two together. So I'm, I'm using Sansama and, uh, as my task and calendar experience, and it's becoming quite a, a decent base for that. So it's worth exploring what your limits are in these applications. Remember that hybrid applications tend to do 80% of things well versus 90 to 100% of things well, um, and that's just something to note. Um, they're not always going to have a full perfect experience like you would get in a traditional structured application. Anyway folks, I hope you found this video useful in helping to break down the differences between hybrid productivity applications and what they mean. Uh, we've got some videos I'm sure coming soon about that, so do make sure to check them out. Anyway folks, a big big thank you and I look forward to seeing you in a future video. Cheerio folks! <laughs>